What's up everybody, my name is Bobby and today I've got a really, really exciting video for you guys and it's one that I've been working on for quite a while now and I'm really excited to share it with you. So, without further ado, before we jump into it, let me just set the stage for a second. A few months ago, the famous eyewear maker Ray-Ban partnered up with Facebook or now Meta to release, in my opinion, the most interesting smart glasses that have been released to date. And these guys are gonna be called the Ray-Ban Stories. So what are the Ray-Ban Stories? Essentially the Ray-Ban Stories, they are a traditional pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses that also have Bluetooth headphones built into it with a microphone and two cameras that allow you to record video on the go from the perspective of you wearing the glasses. So they're not gonna be projecting anything onto the lenses, so that's why I kinda say in quotes, they're smart glasses, cause that's not really where we are yet as far as the capability of this kind of thing. But I think as far as the options that are out there for this type of thing, this one, in my opinion, seems to do it the best. Now, these are not a perfect product by any means, and I'll get into the good and the bad and the ugly and kind of what I think about them all as a whole. But overall, I think it's a really good step in the right direction. So they come in a ton of different colors, a few different styles. The ones we're gonna be looking at today are the Wayfair style that are in the like matte black with the color changing lenses. So essentially when you're indoors, they're gonna be normal, like you're, you know, a normal pair of glasses. And then when you go out in the sun, the lenses transition and turn into sunglasses. And I'll touch on why I picked these guys up specifically. A traditional pair of Wayfair sunglasses typically runs about $163. And the price of the Ray-Ban stories is gonna be $299. So in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you if that 136 extra dollars that you're gonna be paying is worth it. So stay tuned. All right, starting things off, the famous photographer Chase Jarvis once said, the best camera is the one that's with you. And I think that quote sums up how I feel about these glasses almost to a T. I could just end the review here. There's something unique about having a camera built into your glasses and I'm gonna to touch on that quite a bit in this review. Now, as for like the design of them, you're actually gonna get two five megapixel cameras on either side of the actual frame right here. And then there's two little speakers kind of on the, the parts that rest on your ear that kind of point right at your ear. So it's not like bone conduction, it's just low volume speakers that's like targeted sound that points right at your ears. And as for how thick they are in the frame of them, it's honestly like you, you can't tell. So if you're wearing these glasses, it doesn't look like you're wearing smart glasses. Like a lot of times in previous versions, like the Bose ones or just other companies that have done similar things. When you look at the glasses, you can see the side and it's big and chunky because it has all the electronics in the side and you can tell that they're these weird iterations of the glasses. That is not the case with these. Nobody has noticed um, that what these are, and it's, it's pretty cool. They look very sleek, and I imagine that's only gonna get better with time. So to turn them on, when you open up the glasses themselves, there's gonna be a little power button on the inside, and you flick that on and kind of hold it, and you'll see on the other side, a little white light start blinking, meaning it's repairing up to your device. As for the pair speed, it's nothing like AirPods. It's not like super quick or anything like that, but it's not that bad. It does connect pretty quickly. Um, it took me a little while to figure out that you do have to like turn the device on and then hold the actual power button for like three or four seconds until you start to see the white light blink on the inside of it. I didn't know that and you could just turn these on and they won't pair up to your device. Sometimes they do pair up to your device. That part was a little wonky, but if you wanna just make sure they pair up, you go ahead, turn it on, and then hold it to the pair position, if you will, and then it'll blink for a few seconds and then you're off to the races. Not only do they have that little LED indicator on the inside that you're actually able to see out of the corner of your eye when you have them on, but there's also an LED indicator on the outside of the glasses so that if you start filming with them, it will start you know, glowing and I guess alert people that you are filming. So it's not super covert. I'm sure there's some creepos out there that just cover up that little light or something along those lines. But 
it does have that built in so that you do alert people if you're filming them, which is, you know, good or bad, depending on how you look at it. They do typically give you about six hours of battery. And then the case itself, you'll see that when you bend the glasses like this, you see the little charging prong on this side. When you toss them in the case, the case will have some charge itself and give it an additional three hours along with keep it protected. You do have a USB-C port on the back, which is really convenient because everything for the most part is USB-C. So you just have, you know, one charger that can charge these bad boys up. As for how long the battery lasts, very much depends on how much you're using them. If you're just using them to listen to something or if you just have them on passively so that you can be ready to film anything at a moment's notice, you can get a lot of battery life out of them. If you are constantly recording clips and playing a podcast or like a video or, you know, a song or something like that for extended periods of time, you can burn through them pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, it just varies depending on how intensely you're using them. The two cameras, you're able to shoot either video or photos, um, either by pressing this really sleek button that's up on the top of the device or you can actually set up like voice commands where you can be like, hey, Facebook, take a video. I'm not doing that, but you can if you're interested. But I have to say being able to capture video and photos from your, uh, you know, your point of view, essentially, is a really unique way to shoot clips, essentially. So like, you know, usually you're holding like a phone or a camera or something like that. And it's not quite like your eyesight. But this, you literally is just wherever you're looking, it's actually capturing it. And for me, I thought that was pretty unique and it's honestly pretty cool. You know, shooting these clips with your glasses, it's a pretty, it's not that intrusive. It's like you can do it and just enjoy the moment that you're living in as opposed to like shoving a camera in someone's face or things of that nature. It's a really like fly on the wall way to document and capture moments and allow you to keep living in the moment while you're doing it. Now for the big one, the actual quality of these videos. Now I'm gonna just say it right off the bat, these photos and videos are in no way the best looking photo and video that you can. I guarantee you your phone will shoot a better photo and a better video than these glasses will. Promise you that. Video resolution is gonna be 1184 by 1184 and the photo resolution is 2592 by 1944. So like I said, by no means the best video, by no means the best picture. Also really weird aspect ratio, I have to say. So shooting a video and essentially a squared off clip makes for like weird additional clips to like add to a vlog or something like that. But I mean, it's better than nothing. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. It is a weird aspect ratio and I don't believe there's a way to change it, at least that I'm aware of. Another thing to note is when you're shooting these video clips, the max amount of length of the clip that you can shoot is 30 seconds. So this is more than enough for some people who just want a quick little clip of their dog or their baby or whatever it may be. Um, but for people who are sh using this to like shoot vlog clips or like, you know, interview style or just things of that nature, you have to be aware that you will only be able to shoot in 30 second clips. And with only four gigabytes of onboard storage built into the glasses, that's not a ton of content. I mean, photos wise, that's pretty solid. It's like 500 photos. I'm definitely not taking 500 photos in one swing with these guys. It's really only about 30 of those 30 second clips. So. If you're shooting for a whole day, 30 clips can be a lot, also cannot be a lot. It just kind of depends on you, but it's something that I think you should be aware of. Now, with all that said, I bring us back to the quote that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The point of these glasses is not to be the best camera in the world, but it's to capture the moments that you're living in while actually getting to live in them instead of having to stare through a camera or stare through a phone um, or just get wrapped up into seeing the playback right away. It almost feels similar to when you had like a film camera or something and you would take a picture and you can't look at it right away. It doesn't just show up on a little digital screen. The glasses, essentially it's just what you're looking at. You start capturing it. It's not playing it back on the lens of the glasses. You don't see it until you sync it up with your phone and download it later. So in that way, it's almost kind of freeing. It's like you get the best of both worlds. So you get to live in the moment 
and actually do whatever it is that you're doing. You also get to capture and save the memory. Neither of them intrude on the other. It's really nice, honestly. You know, my fiance Elizabeth and I, we've been vlogging for like the last year, just trying to capture this exciting time in our life that we're in at the moment. And I don't know if you guys have ever shot a vlog before, but filming in public places is pretty cringy to be honest, especially if you don't have that many followers on a vlog channel. And then on top of that, it's really intrusive and it just feels weird and it's hard to act natural and it's just like a weird experience in general. So that's why like a lot of times we would find ourselves doing stuff where we could be away from people and not have to like be weird with a camera in a public place or something like that. So the the reason that I was interested in these glasses initially was to have the ability to film in a less intrusive way in more public places, if that makes sense. And so say we're in a store and she's shopping or we're looking around doing whatever it is that we're doing. I'm able to record the moment and not look like that guy who's walking around with a camera in a grocery store and everyone's looking at him like, who's that? It's just a really unintrusive way to kind of document and capture the moment. Now, I probably wouldn't shoot entire vlogs on it, but it's something that I think will be super useful as like a supplemental kind of additional clips or just to add more context or to get those shots in places where it normally wouldn't be acceptable. That's actually why I ended up getting the version of the glasses that changes depending on being inside or outside. So initially when I first bought these, that's why this video has taken so long. When I first bought these, they were the type that had just sunglasses. They were straight sunglasses, which is great for shooting clips outdoors. But the way I was looking at it is like the, the place I want to get clips more is indoors because that's the one place where I feel weird filming what we're doing um, is when we're around other people. So having a pair of glasses that looks like I'm just like somebody who wears glasses when I'm indoors and I'm able to film and record the moment, but still gives me the benefit of sunglasses when we're outside so I can actually, you know, have sunglasses. And then on top of that, you know, use them for recording in those scenarios. That's why I ended up going with these versions. They are more expensive. I think they're $80 more just to have that feature. But for me, I think that was worth it. And that's why I never really went with them. So for me, being able to capture those more authentic moments where people are themselves with that, you know, unintrusive camera, essentially, that is worth the trade-off of the lower quality video, 100% in my opinion. It doesn't matter how nice your camera is, if the, if the story's not good, if the moment's not authentic, um, that's really what's most important. So having something that just, allows you to capture and have is always on you and can let you live in that moment on top of that. That's why I personally think it's worth it. Now, once you have your clips, importing them, super simple. There's an app that you download and it walks you through how to do this. And it essentially just wirelessly connects to your glasses and allows you to transfer the content and it just saves them right into your camera roll like you had taken them on your phone. Super easy. Like I mentioned earlier, they also do have the two speakers on either side. Honestly, that's probably the feature that I use the most out of the glasses for sure. Having those little speakers, it just keeps you from having to have headphones in, if that makes sense, if you wanna to listen to stuff. And so when I'm like on a run, for example, and now I don't have to worry about headphones falling out of my ears and I have my sunglasses on, you know, for that reason. So it's kind of like a best of both worlds. As for the volume of the actual sunglasses, really not the best. It's really not the best audio quality by any stretch of the imagination. So I would say it's definitely more tailored towards, you know, podcast listening to as opposed to music listening to because if you're looking for like a quality pair of headphones for your run or whatever it is you do, this is not it, but it's very convenient to have it kind of all in one, if that makes sense. Now, one other point of concern that I've had about these glasses is the waterproof capabilities of them, essentially. So on Ray-Ban's website, it says that they are definitely not waterproof. So I probably wouldn't wear these in the ocean. I probably wouldn't wear these in a pool. I even feel sketchy wearing them on runs when it's raining outside, but I've still done that and I haven't noticed any issues. My take on it is like, I think, you know, maybe a little rain or a little sweat or something like that. That's probably the extent that I would push these to. 
I probably wouldn't, you know, try to get a clip underwater with them on or something like that because it sounds like they'll break and they're pretty expensive. So I probably wouldn't recommend it. So like I said, they have a base model. That model is going to be $299. You can then spend an extra $30 if you want to get the polarized lenses, which I know a lot of people really love. And that adds like an extra layer of, you know, functionality essentially. And then there is an even higher tiered version, which is this particular one, which has the color tint changing lens, depending on if you're indoor or outdoor. Lots of different options, tons of different colors. It seems like they're rolling out even more of them. So I recommend you check them out, which I'll leave in the description down below. All of that being said, down to the big question of the day, are they worth it? So let's just talk about the $300 version, the base model, $300, is it worth it? So if we do the kind of breakdown that Steve Jobs did when he announced the original iPhone, where he's like, you know, it's a phone, it's an internet communicating device, it's an iPod, like he broke down what this device is, all these different things in one, to, to basically show you how they got to the price that they got to. You can do a similar kind of breakdown with these particular glasses. So high quality pair of Ray-Ban glasses, that's already over half the price. That's 160 and some change, you know what I mean? Then you add into the mix a mediocre pair of Bluetooth headphones. Those are usually around 100. I would say that's probably a good ballpark for that. So that's already almost at that 299 price tag. Then you add into the mix a extremely tiny, extremely convenient low quality video camera. I don't really know of many of those on the market. I would say like the closest to that are like things like a GoPro, for example, but those are high quality for the most part, or pretty good quality, way better quality than this. But, you know, I would say the camera here is definitely worth at least $40. And so if you break down all those different pieces, you get to at least the $300 price tag, if not more. Now, is it worth it? That depends on you. If you are the kind of person that is looking for all three of those items with a use case similar to maybe what I described personally, or you see the value in capturing moments without having to, you know, not live in that moment, there's all sorts of, you know, reasons you might want that. But if you're the kind of person that feels like having the mix of those three different things that I mentioned is the type of device that you would want, I'd say it is worth $300. But if you're gonna be a stickler on the audio quality, just get better headphones. If you're a stickler on the video quality, use your damn phone, that'll do the trick. Or some sort of mirrorless camera or whatever it is that you're into. And if you're into, you know, having glasses, like nicer glasses, then buy some freaking nicer glasses. That's not who this is targeted toward. If you're the kind of person that is interested in these different categories culminating together in one, the way that I described, then I think these are a no brainer. And with all of that being said, I think the most exciting part about these glasses is the potential for what they could be in the near future. I think we don't get to that world where we have augmented reality and we're you know, seeing directions and Yelp reviews on our glasses overlaid into the real world. I don't think we get to that point without companies taking swings like this and trying to push the boundaries of what we can do in a good form factor and just trying this stuff out. And so that's why I was really excited to get to it. I feel extremely blessed that I'm finally at a place in my life where I can be an early adopter and try stuff like this. Um, and I'm really excited for the future. I think this next wave of, you know, technology and dynamic changing devices that are just gonna shift how we operate as humans, I think it's gonna be exciting. I'm a big fan. I recommend you check it out. If you got any value out of this video, I would very, very much appreciate you, you know, leaving a like, subscribing to the channel. If you had any questions about maybe aspects of the glasses that I didn't cover, definitely shoot a comment down below. And yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I very, very much appreciate it. And until next time, peace.